I'm a high styling, woo, profiling, woo, limo riding, woo, up all night, woo. Oh, because for the most part, well, yesterday was my birthday. And also, I did not know that I shared a birthday with the one and the only Woo! Rick Blair. Woo! Why can't I be high styling and profiling? Why don't I have a limo? Why don't I have a bunch of women? Instead, I had to go to work. I'm drinking some root beer. I have my birthday cup. I'm no Ric Flair. But I'll tell you what I am here for. My name is the one and only Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk a little bit about some pro wrestling. Because that's what I do. Um, I'd like to thank all of you that have watched. I think in my, not my past video. And I'll get to that shortly. But my previous video I put out on Sunday. I'd like to thank everyone that has watched. It really kind of humbles me that people watch my videos for some reason. I think I have 3,000 plus views. I think I'm at like 100 hours of views. And it's just kind of humbling. And I like to thank everyone. Again, I do, I do put out content when I can. And, well, kind of yesterday, only because this is going up probably at midnight. Right now it says 12.48 a.m. That means it's the 26th, not the 25th. So again, I'd like to thank all of you that actually wish me a good happy birthday, including Saint 318. Just to help me celebrate, you're going to be part of the El Generico band. Again, if you ever like, comment, I should, I should check my emails, too. I know YouTube's redone their thing. I don't think I can see people that subscribe. But just send me a comment or an email saying, hey, I subscribed. Where's my thing? Trust me, you will get something. I think the next new item I'm going to have is the Holy Set. Which is a little bit different because Willis Williams does that. I think I have a video of him doing that. I have to kind of probably maybe. Oh, geez, I have so much cleaning to do tomorrow. Probably Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I think I think I might have off Sunday. I have to put together some new clips. So I've actually organized all of my wrestling clips, which is very good. So with that, again, thank you very much, Saint 318. I apologize to Saint 318. Um, I used to watch his webpage a lot. Well, mainly because I was on copyright suspension. So I haven't watched him as much. I need to watch him a little bit more. And I'll try in my future endeavors to watch Saint 318 more and give him some comments because, again, on YouTube, you need to show as much love to the whole, the entire YouTube community as you should. 
So with that being said, again, a happy birthday, woo, Rick Flair, woo. And more important, I'll be late a happy birthday to me. Yeah, I say that a lot more quietly, though. Again, again, I, I would like to thank everyone that has shown me support over the year. This show shall continue. Even though I'm not doing that good. But again, look at the Hobo Studios. Can you have seen my cat who, who beats me and slaps me when I do bad things. Um, I'll start off. This is probably going to be a long show, so might as well start off with all the programming notes. This week's kind of a very normal week, and the fact that, well, on Sunday I posted my videos from the live NXT show here in Daytona Beach. Again, there are some videos there. Again, please watch that. You can like, share, comment, subscribe. I put up the Farewell Alistair Black speech up on the Friendoverse. I'd like to thank all you Friendos for your comments. You know what? For Tuesday's show, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down your names and send a shout-out to you guys. Thank you very much. Um, Tuesday, I do my typical SmackDown show. Next week, it's pretty funky. Because it's kind of a special time of year. Um, Monday night will be, again, my typical Raw show. Tuesdays, I'm going to pull double duty. Because on Tuesday... That's Fat Tuesday. It's Mardi Gras. Woohoo! Means I get to drink it up. Woo! And I'll dive into my little birthday cupcake here. Thanks, Mom. Love you, Mom. Have a bite of a munch of my birthday cupcake. <coughs> Chocolate frosting is good. Need root beer. More root beer. So Tuesday night, it's going to be SmackDown. And I'm going to have a bonus episode of WWE 2K17. I'm too cheap and I can't afford 2K19. And I don't have a PS4. I have a PS3. So Tuesday is going to be a double video output show. I'll probably do the PS3, uh, the, 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 the uh, WWE 2K17 show first, a Mardi Gras special. And then only because SmackDown's at night. I'll do that later. And then March 6th. I would truly like to thank every one of you that have watched the show. Because that is going to be one entire year. I've been on YouTube. And if it wasn't for all the viewers out there and the 33 subscribers and the people with the 3,000 views, I have no idea what I would be doing right now. I'd be really bored. Life would kind of stink. So again, I'm going to have a little retrospective, mainly because, for a lot of reasons, but... Let's see here. 
We have some NXT pictures. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> NXT wrestling from Dade City. Oh, smacked on Orlando. Um, I have flowers. Individual pictures. Baseball. I don't know about this one. This one I'll have to keep. Oh, wait, there it is. Maybe. There's just pictures of me fishing. Is that always a good sign? That'll go back there. Oh, here it is. Pro Wrestling Orlando, March 2017. I don't know. I'll have to go through all this. And we'll see some pictures of all this stuff. No, cover up that name. Is that the right? Yeah, there we go. So there's some pictures to show you guys. And a couple of musical renditions by the one and only Hobo Tom. And it's probably going to be Frank Sinatra. And I think because of... I haven't taken a look at those CDs. I don't think I've ever seen those CDs. I've just actually managed to clean up my own hard drive. And I'm using one of these devices. A little flash device. That's him rather hard drive. You keep all my wrestling stuff on. I finally got organized. Somehow. I also find one, one happy birthday picture, though. Again for... Woo! Ric Flair. I should also put that up on her. <laughs> I'm going to mess with a friend tonight, too. I'm going to like that. Uh, well, she won't, but... She has funny stories. She actually met Ric Flair once. That's kind of cool. Um, what was I getting at? But yeah, so then I'm going to have kind of four wrestling shows next week. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for that. Oh, a little musical ring rendition. Um, I'm going to see how long those pictures take. And you'll hear my rendition of two great Frank Sinatra songs. That probably sums up both my life and what I've done here at, the, at my little wrestling channel. Of that's life, because sometimes that is life. And one of my favorite ones. Shoot, I still have to get a new record player. But I'm sorry, I got sidetracked because I would do things my way, and probably a little video clip about how I have to deal with things at work. Because, again, YouTube has not monetized me. I think I had grandiose streams of being monetized and making a $1,000 a month on YouTube by now. Life happens, folks. I think with the other person over at All Things Wrestling, some of us do have to have normal jobs. So well, let's talk about this job right now. Let's talk about what I should be talking about. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Now, I just want to take another happy birthday cupcake. Yeah. Mm. Home frog. Mom's cupcakes are good. Emma's cupcakes were better. So it's Monday Night Raw. I swig of my actually vodka loaded root beer. I have to celebrate somehow, folks. Ah, uh, that's better. 
got Roman Reigns coming out. Joe and I, I am very happy to hear that you are doing much better. Again, to Joe and I, I always liked him. Did not like the way Roman Reigns was shoved on our throats. But Joe and I, hey, I'm glad you're doing much better. You will, I'll still keep you somewhat in my prayers when I can think of it when I go to church and my work allows me to. With that being said, yeah, that was really good. He's, I, I'm, I'm going to call him Joe Nye. I don't know him personally. If he walked into my store, in jeans and a t-shirt, I might say, a guy with a lot of arm tattoos. A lot of wrestlers look pretty normal. I might recognize him as Roman Reigns and say, are you Roman Reigns? You're Joe and I. Thank you very much. Take his hand, try and sneak in a selfie. But, again, Joe and I, on, on issues like this, you have to focus more on the man versus the performer. Joe and I, I still wish you well. I truly hope you get over all this. Cancer is very debilitating. Um, I'm not going to get overly mushy, stuff like that, because as a biologist, eh. I hate to say it, and when I've discussed it with friends, kind of just the natural course of things to some degree. Don't get me wrong, not all cancer is natural. Some's environmental. We get old. Our body breaks down. It's a natural way of It sucks to say it. But it happens. It happens to good people. It happens to bad people. It happens to all people in between. Joe and I, you're still going to be within my thoughts as you're going through this. But I can't think of, I can't think of you. Again, because it's, it's kind of back in my memory. I, oh, I, well, well, maybe if I go to church, I'll say, you know what? Joe and I need a little extra. Please help him. He looks, Joe and I looks very good. He looks healthy. He still looks strong. And even as Roman Reigns, he still looks like Roman Reigns, which, hey, that's awesome. And during this whole thing, and he's had the support of probably thousands of people. In this promo he gave, most importantly, number one, he looks good. He, he looks healthy, and that is a big part of anything. You ask anyone in any sports field, you look good, you feel good, you feel good, you play good, or you perform good. And... Again, it's not one of those things I'm going to harp on, but I'm very happy that that he's doing well. I mean, Roman Reigns, booking decisions, hey, we could have argument, argue, argument after argument about how the WWE has, and Vince has decided to deal with Roman Reigns. You know, and I is a whole different matter. And I wish him every best thing in the world. And it's really good to see that, again, one, number one, he looks healthy. I mean, physically, he looks healthy. He still has, I don't know what a good way to say it is. It might not be the best, but he still has the muscle mass. He has the build still. He's not. Withered looking. 
he looks healthy. And that's the number one thing. Um, when he came out, again, there was a lot of love for Roman Reigns. You actually see him a little bit period at that one particular moment. And I like that. That means he's human. He's actually Joe Noy. And I, I fully apologize if I butcher the last Everyone knows who I'm talking about. So again, he looks healthy. He seen he got teary eyed. It's good. To, it's good to hear him talk about it. I, I don't know much, but it seems like it's almost therapeutic for him to talk about again certain aspects. I don't have to hear everything, and the WWE doesn't have to hear everything. But here he's doing better. And we hear he's in remission. Hey, you know what? You welcome back. Welcome back. And he did get teary eyed. He seemed very humbled. Doing a lot more high fives and a lot more posing with the crowd. It was. I don't know how to describe it. And it sounds sappy, but it, it gives you that fuzzy, warm moment in the heart. So again, yes, Joe and I, I'm so happy you are doing so well. Thank you so much for all the work you've done. Don't agree with the booking decision, but that is a totally separate issue. Then Seth Rollins comes out, gives a little hug. That was good. Then our first match of the night. Alistair Black and Ricochet. Wow. I just saw Alistair Black here in Daytona Beach. And it always makes me think, are they really going to call him up after they fly him all over these places? And is he just doing this for his goodbye tour? I don't know what booking decisions are made in that, but I wonder if they have any say. It's like, you know what? I want to go to City XXNet or XYZ or well, whatever. And just say, you know what? I remember when I was there the first time. I, I really should be there the last time. If that's it, Alistair Black always have a special place with this hobo. And you know what that means? For my for my nephew's birthdays, they're going to get an Alistair Black shirt. Just because I can say, you know what? He gave that heartfelt, emotional speech.
This is a family right here. And believe me, I'm, I'm so, so glad I get to be a part of this family. Because this family, no matter where I go after this, will always be my home. It truly is. Without you guys, I wouldn't have been here. So this, all of this, the call from, from, from this match, the first match I've had, and NXT, is all to you. And he deserves, he deserves to get a little extra something. Not much, but hey. Him and Rick G team up versus the Revival. Black is awesome. I mean, he is so good at striking. And the Revival is great because they were selling the heck out of his strikes. And I don't know, I honestly forget where they were. Oh, they were in Atlanta. So they were only. Wait a second. That's only. I say. Six to eight hour drive from Daytona Beach? It's not too bad. It's probably all day Sunday. Rest up, relax. Monday. Have. Go against the Revival, who know what that hectic NXT schedule is like. And so that was probably pretty good. Again, his strikes are amazing. Ooh, they look like they hurt. And Ricochet, listen, there's flippy, flippy stuff. No one can match it. I mean, he is so good. He's worth the price of the alone to, to watch him new stuff that you're like, the human body can do that. <laughs> and the revival is a revival. Another classic tag team match. But again, this was fun stuff. And the rev revival lost. Officer Black and Rick Shea went over. It was a really darn good match. Again, it wasn't for the belt. It builds up Ricochet. And Alistair Black, whenever they make their official NX and official WWE main roster debut and are full time on the main roster. And it's just I'll tell you what, both of them look good. You know what that means? If you have a good match, you get a cheeseburger reading. So with that said, I'm going to take another bite of my little birthday cupcake. And I'm going to Baron Cor Corbin interview. Who almost sounds sympathetic to Roman Reigns. Except for it's done in such a monotone voice. I was almost doing this. I'm like, oh, what did I miss? Rose, Baron Corbin. I didn't miss anything. I have another sip of root beer. This is a Baron Corbin interview. That's the only thing he did not do get on when he left NXT was. His interviews. He only got a C minus an interview two oh one. And then Snoop Dogg shows up. Snoop Dogg's looking old. But I might remember him though. He was quite a bit younger. He hypes up the Ric Flair birthday show. 
I have to send that into a twisted pixie. <laughs> Lars comes out. He's interrupted by Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans hasn't had a match yet. She just shows up and... And she's all dressed, too. I don't get this. Unless they set up Lacey Evans versus Asuka. Wait, I've seen that in NXT. That wasn't that good. In fact, the first time I saw Lacey Evans, wasn't that good either. So we'll see what happens with her. Then Dean comes in. It's not too funny. Makes a quick little thing about Elias. Leaves the ring. Oh, Dean's doing what Dean wants to do. You know what? <laughs> On my last day of work, Hobo Tom is going to do what he wants to do. What? You want to use that? Get that nonsense out of here. You get out of here. I don't care. Oh, wait. You want to see the manager? I am the manager. <laughs> Get out of here and go somewhere else. Stupid, filthy person from Daytona Beach. Freaking illiterate whose family was raised by goats. Yeah, I can say that now. I'm off work. In fact, it's 1.14 in the morning. And I checked with my, one, of, one of my co-workers. Make sure she was not from Daytona Beach. So I can rip on Daytona Beach as much as I want. <laughs> then we have the Rise Squad versus Natalia Neidhart and Ronda Rousey. I still want to put their last names. You don't have one given name. You have two names. First name and last name. You have... I forget what they used to call it. The surname and their paternoman. Thing. I forget, but it would be your name and then your family name. When the Japanese do that, they just do it. Japanese and Chinese just do it reverse. They put the family name first and the individual name second. I think the Norse people just used to call them, again, way back in the day. Like, um, if I had a daughter, that's to say she would be, let me think of a name, Sarah Thomas Dottier. And of course, if I was a son, would be Sam Tom's son. Basic and easy. Enough about that, though. That's my own little quibble with WWE. So we had the Riot Squad versus Natalia and Ronda Rousey. And it was pretty good. Sarah Logan. Sound a little bit cuckoo there for a moment. She also has a new outfit. And you can say what you want about WWE repackaging. I liked her better as the backwoods Kentucky person versus this Viking War Raider War Machine mistress thing. Even though she is married to, I believe, Ro, I forget his first name. I know there's Ro and Hanson. I want to say it's Ro she's married to. Vikings are making a weird comeback in society. 
I don't know why, but they just start. Whatever. Uh, Ruby writes her tag team partner, Liv Morgan's on the outside. Again, they're kind of free birding things. Ruby it was fun. She was still wrestling with her little beanie on for a while. And Liv, one point in the match, Liv Morgan was between the rock and the hard place. Or between Talia and Ronda Rousey. Not a place you want to be. Uh, overall, it was a pretty good... It wasn't a bad match. I mean, you put two veterans like Natalia and Ruby right in the match, and it's definitely not going to be bad. It wasn't... Ronda wasn't as botchy as she was last week. She didn't have that much. Then Sarah Logan, Sarah Logan. Um, she used to be Crazy Mary Dobson. She still knows what she's doing in the ring. That headbutt still looks great, though. I don't care what they say. And that's the ending. Sharp shooters, kind of gorilla lock. That looks good. I'm a fan of the gorilla lock. It's like a reverse sharp shooter. Then for the gorilla lock, you lock your legs around your hips. It's really a complex to describe. WWE 2K17 that has an amazing job of it. If that was going to be anyone's finisher, even though the hobo would not be a technical wrestler, and my finisher is, of course, the headbutt to the groin and the chokehold. Everyone knows the chokehold is going to put you to sleep. And the headbutt to the groin just hurts. And, of course, the hobo Tom Stanger is a pile driver. Skin just looks bad. It looked it looked good. Um, Natalia, she got kind of the brunt of it all. That's not too bad. Um, but this match, you know what this match had? This match had a dust the finish, baby. You cannot have a Rick Flair tribute show without invoking the one and only. Dusty Rose, best sweetheart. That means with when with Ric Flair, woo, gets involved. We got to have a dusty finish, and that's because Lynch was a bad, bad, bad girl, and she came out and started whooping people with that crutch. Just like the American dream would. He had to. Terrible Dusty Rhodes impersonation, I know. But, again, middle of the match, or towards the end of the match, Becky Lynch comes out with a crutch from the audience. Try to hold her back. But, not going to hold Becky Lynch back. She starts whipping people with a crutch. Eventually, it's a Dusty finish, baby! But because the wrestling was so good, it's the dusty old cheeseburger, baby. Because everyone likes the cheeseburger. It's like everyone likes the Becky Lynch. When Becky Lynch comes out, starts whooping people with a crutch, Ronda Rousey gets involved, Becky and Ronda get involved, of course, you have security. You have to separate. You have to separate the two ladies. Becky wants to fight security. Actually, Becky gets arrested, and then Ronda Rousey tries to fight off security. She wants to get to Becky Lynch. Um, long story short, Ronda Rousey calls out the man, Vincent K. McMahon, and gets Stephanie McMahon instead. And she just leaves the title belt. Says, Steph, you have to do what's right for business. Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch versus Charlotte. Here's my title. I don't even care about this. Hey, it is what it is. But our next match, we have Jinder Mahal. <laughs> Jinder Mahal runs down Ric Flair. 
Listen, Jinder Mahal, I know people that like him. He's nowhere near the levels of woo, Ric Flair. So it's Jinder Mahal versus Kurt Angle. Angle still has the moves. I mean, he can still take bumps. He can still... He has that great-looking German suplex. Um, Jinder can, Jinder can really sell that, too. And again, Jinder, I think, realizes this is Kurt Angle he's going against. Kind of puts his hand on his neck. Kurt knows exactly what to do. Oh, oh, it hurts so much. No, not my neck. And he's probably so gentle with it, though. Um, I wonder when we're going to see really the last wrestling days of Kurt Angle. I know it is pro wrestling, but they do take those bumps. Um, I think there's been, or I think it's, it's been self-reported. Hulk Hogan, I think, actually lost, I think, two or three inches of his height because of so many bumps he took. He just kind of really, like, compacted his spine, and he had so many spinal surgeries. Again, one of maybe a few rest reasons I never wanted to be a pro wrestler. You don't want to deal with spinal surgeries and neck surgeries. Everything else away from the central part of my body. Yeah, if I get bruises, if I get things... I, I've only had a few broken bones. I think all on the one hand, I broke the wrist here, my ring finger is still funky looking, and I can still feel the, the, I know I can feel the gap in the wrist where I broke it, because it's right there, it's still a kind of funky dip, and my thumb was broken, right, it's hard to say, but like kind of right there-ish, right beneath the joint. I know this was broken right there because this knuckle swelled up to the size of like my eyeball. My knee's been damaged. That's still only like 90, 85% on a bad day. 90 on a bad day. This one dislocated twice. This one dislocated once, but never anything that really could come back and haunt me, like neck and back. Ooh, just stay away from that stuff. With that said, um, Kurt Angle does lock in the ankle lock. Again, Jinder does a great job of selling. Jinder taps out. The sinks get in the ring. Once the sinks get in the ring, the sinks get beaten. It was a fun match. It was a ham sandwich match. Then we get to the moment of bliss. Oh. She runs down Ronda Rousey. Hey, I would be a fighting champ. Yeah, I'd be a fighting champ, too. I think that's what they're supposed to do. I know in the old school WWE days, they had to be defended every 30 days, I think. At least showed up on TV, like, all the time. So she runs down Ronda Rousey in her moment of bliss. It's an okay show. Brings up Finn Balor. <laughs> I wish I had abs like Finn Balor. I do not have abs like Finn Balor. I have a tummy like Otis Dozovich. But <laughs> she's like, you take that belt off and you show me those abs, I'll show you my... Oh, and Leo Rush shows up! I want to. I want to know what Alexa Bliss would. So uh, Leo Rush comes out. And Alexa really runs down Leo Rush. She's really good at this talk show role. 
I know it's cliches, but she's good though. I mean, I was entertained. Gee, I was entertained by the, all the innuendo involved. It was fun though. She again running down Leo Rush. I don't have abs that. His abs. Wait, who used to have good abs? It was Carl Anderson used to have like you show up his abs. That's just funny. So in the next match we have we have Finn Balor versus Leo Rush. Leo Rush is still quick as anything, dude. I mean he can go back and forth. In this match and probably only this match, Finn seems slower. He's definitely the stronger, more brutish person. But again, against Leo Rush, how can you be as fast? And only one... Actually... Five people... No, four. Have the speed of Leo Rush. Ricochet? Kalisto, Grand Metal Leak, and Lindsay Dorado. Again, look at their backgrounds, though. Totally different. And this is really fun. I mean, Leo Rush is quick as anything. Those running chops? Ooh, those look good. Leo Rush, he has his moments, though, throughout this match. Some good false finishes. And Finn busted out the 1916 again. I like it. Again, every time, it's like one of those things he he pulls out when it's a special opponent, when he really needs to put a little extra stank on something. I'll tell you what, I am totally fine with that. It's good. One of those things that you don't see that often. So every time you see it, it seems original. It's like you're like, I thought he had it, but I haven't seen that in a while. It makes the match interesting. Oh, an interesting match. I like that. You know what? If you have a really darn good interesting match, it's fun, has at least some complexity to it. This was a really good Surf and turf quality match. Then you have a MV machine in the background. And Otis does the mission just take up the acolytes. That's fun. I like it. It goes good by me. Then the next match, then it gets kind of weird. It starts off so good and just ends. Eh. So you have Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lashley. Lashley gets the early advantage. Again, he jumps Braun Strowman from behind in the beginning. Braun eventually is going to make his comeback. He does his running tackles. I don't, think this, I don't even think the match ended with a double count out. It was kind of weird. Um, I get that they're trying to build Braun up a little bit more, but trying to keep Bobby Lashley strong. Because again, Leo Rush was there. He's trying to make amends for everything. It was a ham sandwich. There we go. Even my mic got excited. Then you had Woo! The one, the only, the high style. Woo! Pro five. Woo! Oh. Oh. Limousine. Riding. Woo! Oh. All night. Woo! Rick. Woo! 
course, I have to always do the Ric Flair strut whenever you mention his name. And he wants to go, woo! So again, he had a little promo, which is good. Um, then you have Drew McIntyre versus Dean Ambrose. A no DQ match. It was pretty good. I like the fact that Gene's Dean in a street fight is coming in a no DQ match coming out in jeans. Makes sense. If you're gonna get whooped, you might as well at least cover yourself a little bit. They have the leather belt. I forgot where that came from. Oh wow. She was whooping Dean for a good part of the match. Um and then of course Dean made his comeback when he went to the outside and he went back. He actually seemed like the lunatic fringe, which is good. You know, he's doing whatever he wants because he knows, I'm done. So, again, it was a really fast start when Dean got to the outside. That suicide dive, the first one Drew caught, threw him right against the thing. Um, just whooped him some more. Uh, Dean did it a second time, nailed it. He started to use the steps. Oh, and this is the way that steps should be used. You're not throwing them at your opponent like Braun Strowman. You're just taking a sudden banging against it. I mean, it's a no DQ match. You might as well do that. Um, I wonder now for one of Dean's last matches if this is going to set up a lunatic asylum match with Dean Ambrose versus Drew McIntyre. And what that is, is this a steel cage match with a variety of, like, weapons and stuff. I think the last time they had it, it was him versus Chris Jericho. You have their thumbtacks, a plant, kendo stick. I think they had, like, a machete up there. Or side that those like bladed something. Barbed wire baseball bat. Bat. And just like other random wrestling weapons. Steel chairs, cinder blocks, all that other fun stuff. What if they're setting up for that? So then, of course, after Dean. <laughs> Got to just bang Drew's head against those steel stuff. An amazing image. Dean starts to whip Drew with the belt. That was good. But then the match turned. It was so good and fun. And then you're like, oh, wow, this is something. Baron Corbin. Bobby Lashley and Elias came out. Elias came out first, hit Dean over the head with the guitar. I could deal with that. And then Bobby Lashley, Leo Rush, Baron Corbin. And I'm like, and of course Seth Rollins came out with his Reigns came out. He did his one move. And hey, you know what? If he's feeling good, if he's good enough to do that. Again, that's amazing. The crowd got to see him do, ooh, pa. I like that. I even marked that for them. I'm like, yes. Oh, am I cheering for Roman Reigns? Yes. So that was good, though. It was a good moment for him. It was a feel-good moment. They kind of left Dean kind of slumped in the corner, though. The match itself was okay. The fact that everyone got kind of involved. Nah. It's a good, it's an okay ham sandwich. And Dean's just kind of like left to himself. The next match you have Nia Jax versus Bailey. Again, I guess they're leading up to Fastlane for another woman's 
tag team belt. Those belts actually look pretty good. I'm kind of impressed with the way they made those belts. Let's to start off the match. Ooh, that Simone headbutt's amazing. Um, eventually, Baylor does, Bailey does get the better of the two. Um, she's the more technical wrestler. She's more. She has more ring savvy. She's more aware of where she is. She has again the the basic technical mat wrestling skills. Nia Jax is just really the brawler. Uh, long story short, uh, Banks eventually does get involved. Uh, Tamina gets involved. Tamina gets wiped out, and then Bailey hits the elbow drop after some sequence of events on Nia Jax. I hate to say it, but I'm not really that thrilled with this combination. Um. I don't know. It just might be me. But to me, this was just a ham sandwich match. And then to wrap things up for the whole show, you have the whole... <laughs> The whole roster's on the stage. <laughs> the one thing I noticed, they're all kind of staying there, kind of quiet, just waiting. <laughs> no way, Jose's just like talking up with people. Um, eventually, Triple H comes out, Stephanie comes out. He comes out. Woo! Rick! Woo! Flair! Um. He announces all of his uh, uh, past opponents. Heartbreaked Shawn Michaels came out again. There was, there was, there was the I love you, man moment um, when HBK pinned Ric Flair. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was there. He's still looking pretty good. You know what? For his age, good. And I, I, was, sh I was actually semi-shocked he's still alive. I mean, I can say I've watched Ricky the Dragon Steamboat wrestle. Well, at least on, like, TV. But, I mean, not many people can see to say that. So, the Steamboat showed up. He looked amazing for his age. I went on his age. I wish I looked half as good. Jeez, he has to be in his... I'm 40-something. I don't remember. He has to be in his 60s or 70s. Yeah, somewhere around. Um, what else came out? Steamboat, he just... Oh, Kurt Angle shows up. And he has some good matches against Ric Flair. Woo! Ding showed up. I was shocked with that. And, and he was chatting it up. Poppy Rude. I wonder if they were talking about their old Impact days. And the announcers actually mentioned WCW. That was a nice little promo then, given, of course, by Ric Flair. And when Ric Flair's music hits, ooh, there's no Ric Flair. Instead, Dave Batista shows up. I just... Sh Drags Ric Flair. <laughs> Two things about this. One, even though Ric Flair was supposedly unconscious after a beating, he seemed to have the biggest, most joyous look on his face while lying on the ground. That was good. And two, does this tease a Triple H Batista WrestleMania 35 match? Ooh, that could be good. Again, and that was Raw. Not bad, but again, it's kind of a tale of two shows. You have the first half, which was really good. That middle part, they. I don't know what they have to do, but they have to work on that. And then, woo! 
the end part. Woo! Again, it was fun though. It wasn't a bad show. It didn't seem, like, the exception of that middle part after the Finn Balor match, it just got long. And that was Monday Night Raw for you. Again, this is a perspective of a hobo though. So I would like to thank everyone for watching. Um, please like, oh wait, I don't have to say that anymore. I shall see everyone Tuesday. Bye.